Yes guys, what's going on? It's Ashton here, and do you ever just find yourself riding your pet wraith through the fields of World's Edge? When out of nowhere, from the heavens, descends a message from an absolute god himself, calling you a Zim controller bot. Whatever that is. But thankfully, of course, you always have that one reply that no one can argue to. Well, thanks to this guy's interesting gamer tag, we have today's video lined up for you, and that is going to be a weapons tier list for Apex Legends Season 5. You guys seem to enjoy the last one so much and have been enjoying the videos recently so much, and I really appreciate you all for the amazing support that you've been giving the channel, so I thought I'd come back with another tier list for you guys, talking about my opinion on the best weapons in the game. I have to make it clear, this is my opinion. Before we get into today's video, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more regular Apex Legends content from myself, because trust me, you don't want to end up like this Octane who didn't like and subscribe during the last video. The good news is that with me, <laughs> at least it will be over quick. I also want to make it expertly clear that I won't be going into too much detail about every single weapon and why I put them in each tier because I'm going over 20 different weapons or weapon variants in this video and I'm excluding the three golden legendaries from care packages because we all know that they would just be S tier anyway so just assume that they're in S tier because I'm not mentioning them, they're not worth the time because we all know how good they are. So kick back, grab some popcorn and grab a drink and make sure you enjoy the rest of the video while we go over the best guns in Apex Legends. So obviously in the D tier we have two weapons and I think you all know what they are going to be. It is the base P2020 and the base Mozambique without hammer points. Of course with hammer points we all know how useful these guns can be and we're going to talk about them more in the tiers above but I don't think I need to really go over why the Mozambique and the P2020 are so bad. Both of these weapons have the lowest damage output in the game for any weapon and they are designed to be the worst weapons in the game for a reason. Respawn even came out themselves and said we need guns like this in the game to balance the meta. We need guns in the game that you can land on early and use them to kill an enemy, but later on in the game they become less viable. So I think it's fair to say that these guns belong in the D tier, and if anyone argues otherwise, you're wrong. So guys, next we're going to move up into the C tier, and this is where things get juicy. There are a lot of guns in this C tier, and honestly, I don't think you can argue with any of them being slap bang just above average. Now, the guns I've decided to put in this C tier are the L-Star, the Sentinel, the RE45, EVA-8, Charge Rifle, Longbow, Triple Take, and the Havoc Select Fire variant. Now, of course, the Longbow and the Triple Take both have hop-up variants which make the weapons a lot stronger and they are in the above tiers that we will get onto shortly, but with the rest of these weapons, and even with the Longbow and the Triple Take without the hop-ups, you know, you find these weapons early game, you land on them and you think, okay, I can do a job with this, I can wipe whoever's near me, I just want to get the job done and then I want to drop these weapons as soon as possible. Unless you're one of those weirdos who like to run around with the charge rifle and poke up their evo shield. Ooh, I've gotta get red. Or if you're one of those weird guys who stand by the RE45 being a better version of the R99, here's a hint, it's not. Then I think all of these weapons are guns that you will drop as soon as you finish with them, the moment that you have finished wiping that first team that you end up landing on, because nobody wants to be running around with any of these weapons mid-game. I will say the RE45 buff has made it slightly better, I still don't think it's good enough to move it up a tier. The movement speed when aiming down sight is nice though, and the increased damage is also nice. And I will say the gold variant of the RE45 is a ton of fun to use, it's a mini laser and okay, if I was really, really going off just the gold variant alone, maybe it would be a tier above, but we're going off the base variant, it belongs in C tier in my opinion, along with the rest of these weapons. Moving on up now into the B tier, and this is where things get spicy. We have a ton of guns in this tier to talk about, and they are the Alternator, the Hemlock, Spitfire, Mastiff, Precision Choke Triple Take, Skull Piercer Longbow, Eva 8 Double Tap, Mozambique Hammer Points, and the G7 Double Tap. Honestly now this is a tier I could speak about for a long time, so I'm just going to go over the standout additions into the B tier, which are in my opinion the Hemlock, 
the Mozambique Hammer Points and the G7 Double Tap. Now, the Hemlock is a gun in the past I've made a guide on, and I've previously said it is up there with one of the best guns in Apex, and honestly, I still think it is up there with one of the strongest guns in the game, and it almost, almost made A tier for me, but personally, I just don't think at most ranges and in most battles, the guns in A tier are gonna lose to a Hemlock, and the Hemlock is such a strong gun when used correctly, and it's a shame, but in my opinion, it's just a little bit weaker than the guns in A tier. You'll see when we get to A tier what I mean by that, but this is, you know, this is a controversial opinion, I know, and a lot of people are going to disagree with it, but I just wouldn't pick it up over any of the guns in A tier, and that's why I had to move it down to B tier, but it is a strong, strong B tier weapon, and a gun that I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw to the floor if I saw, you know, an alternator or anything else in B tier. I think the Hemlock is the strongest weapon I have in the B tier. We also of course have the addition of the Mozambique Hammer Points. A long way away from its non-Hammer Points counterpart down in D tier, the Hammer Point Mozambique is very usable, but it's only usable in certain circumstances. Now if you manage to get that guy cracked and manage to get that big Mozambique shot on him, you can often one-tap them with the Hammer Points Mozambique and that is massive. But the thing is with the Mozambique is you only have those three shots in the chamber. Now a good player will make good use of those three shots in the chamber, but if you're coming up against maybe another good player or a very stressful situation, you might whiff one or two of those and it just makes it a lot harder to hit that big shot and I just think maybe a few more bullets in the chamber would make it a lot better of a weapon and would move up with the P2020 hammer points which you might have guessed already is in one of the above tiers but I just think the lack of bullets in the chamber for the Mozambique and the fact it's a shotgun so it has that reduced range already and it has the you know unique usability of only being able to be strong when the enemy is not shielded I think it's a solid B tier weapon and yeah it's not one you can really go too wrong with but you've got to be careful when you're using it I also have the G7 double tap in here, which is interesting, you know, G7 is often referred to as one of the best guns in Apex Legends, and it is one of the best guns in Apex Legends. I just don't think the double tap variant of it is one of the best guns in Apex Legends. It can hit very hard, as we all know. We've all been double tap scouted before, and it's not nice, but I do think it's a bit harder to hit your double tap shots, and that gap in between bursts is also not great. I do just think the semi-auto version of the Scout is far more effective, especially at range. And although the double tap idea is nice on the Scout, personally I don't think it's been pulled off all too well. And I just think it belongs firmly in B tier, a weapon that can be strong in certain circumstances, but it's just not as strong as its counterpart. So with B tier out of the way, we're moving on up into A tier now, and that is where we have the R301, the Prowler, the Flatline and the Hammer Points P2020. So I know a lot of people are going to feel very aggrieved that the R301 is in A tier and not S tier, but personally I just think this is where it belongs. It was previously in the S tier before the patch that nerfed it to the ground, and honestly it's still a very strong weapon to use and a weapon I often pick up, but I think with the R301, some of its counterparts that are in S tier outperform it in the places that it is supposed to excel in, which means that I have to put it in the A tier because it is not as good as the other options that you can have instead of the R301, which are the same type of weapon, so like an assault rifle for example. I put the Prowler in here because of the 5 round burst potential. Now, if you've ever picked up a Prowler off the drop and landed the full 5 bullets, you'll know how fast it shreds people. And if you can manage to control the Prowler and land those 5 round bursts on people, you're going to absolutely destroy them. And of course the trick to using the non-select fire Prowler is always to hip fire from close range because in my opinion that's a lot easier than controlling the ADS, which can be quite hard at the best of times. But also knowing the potential of just having to find a select fire to bump it all the way up to that amazing select fire prowler, you know the prowler is a very viable weapon and one that I will never mind carrying in my back pocket throughout the entirety of the game. Obviously I've got the flatline up in A tier as well and a lot of people will be surprised at this, but the flatline is such a strong weapon and if you come face to face with a flatline and the flatline guy hits all of his shots, you're gonna die, no questions asked, you are going to die. It hits so very hard and the only downside to the flatline is that horizontal recoil that it has. 
I've seen a lot of people call the flatline the best SMG in the game, which of course is funny because obviously the flatline's an assault rifle. Wow, you're so smart, the flatline's an assault rifle. Yes, the flatline's an assault rifle. Uh, I know, I have to say that, some people won't get it. The flatline is an assault rifle, not an SMG, but it is most effective when used at close range like an SMG. You can even put a bruiser on the flatline and use it from medium to close range at a stretch medium range you know you're not really going to be able to use it for long ranges and long distances because it's just not that kind of weapon but it's certainly a weapon that hits hard and fast up close and definitely a weapon I will love to continue using for the rest of season 5 because rolling up on people with a flatline feels really good because you're able to get those knocks very fast and very efficiently and they have absolutely no chance. Last but not least we have the P2020 hammer points up here in A tier and that is because it is just the best version of the P2020 and the best hammer points weapon in the game. Now, I think a lot of people were looking for the replacement of the PK with this new update because the PK was the gun that you'd pull out in those close range engagements and spam and spam and spam until you hit that big damage shot. And I think now the P2020 hammer points has somewhat replaced it in my opinion. A lot of times when you're fighting in Apex, you'll use your first weapon to break the shields and hurt a little bit of health of your opponent, and you'll pull out your secondary to finish the job, and there is absolutely no secondary that is better to pull out to finish your opponent than the P2020 hammer points. At max, you're going to have to hit two to three shots to finish your opponent, and that is so good with the fire rate of the P2020 and an extended mag chucked on on top of it you're going to have absolutely no problem spamming this thing and hitting one or two shots because it's just such a fast firing weapon and it is so scary when someone pulls out a P20 hammer points on you, you know that you are screwed. But of course that leaves us with the S tier, the top tier of weapons in my opinion that are in Apex Legends Season 5 and those weapons are as follows. We have the G7 Scout, the R99, the Havoc, the Wingman and the Wingman Skull Piercer, and the Prowler with Select Fire. I feel like I really don't have to go over any of these weapons at all because if you've played Apex Legends, you already know that these are the most desirable weapons in the game. The R99 has always been up there as one of the best guns in the game for its fire rate and potential damage output that it gives. The Prowler with Select Fire is arguably up there with the best close range weapons in the game because of the potential damage output, especially when you have an extended heavy mag on there taking the weapon to over 30 bullets. The Wingman has always been up there with one of the best weapons in the game with its high damage output but of course there's a lot of skill to be able to use the Wingman so take that into account before picking this one up thinking you're going to destroy everyone. But of course the Wingman also has the potential to poke at range and can be a real nuisance if you use it correctly. Despite being moved down to an assault rifle and being nerfed over the seasons, the G7 Scout is still the best long range weapon in the game. If you've ever played ranked, you'll know how much people love this weapon and love to just sit on top of high ground with a scout with a three times and poke their hearts out because they know that they can deal high levels of damage because the scout is easy to control and takes light ammo so you can carry loads of ammunition around for it Unlike sniper ammo where it only stacks at 16, you can carry absolutely tons of ammo for the scout and you're going to be set for the rest of the game. And then we have what in my opinion is currently the strongest weapon in the whole of Apex which is the Havoc. Now if you hit every bullet of a Havoc magazine you're going to be dealing over 500 damage to your opponent. With 32 bullets in the magazine because there is no extended energy mags anymore so you just have the base magazine which is 32 which is extremely high for a weapon of this damage output. It's so easy to deal high levels of damage to your opponent, especially when you take into consideration how easy the Havoc is to control. The recoil is very, very low, even after the patch that the Respawn have given the Havoc. It's still the easiest gun to control in the game, deals the highest amount of damage in the game, and has arguably one of the highest base magazine sizes in the game. 
Professional players and casual players alike have been talking about the Havoc for a while now and it's common knowledge in the Apex community that the Havoc is broken and definitely needs some looking at by Respawn. But guys that is it for my opinion on what are the best weapons in Apex Legends Season 5. Now of course my opinions are based a lot around what I see in ranked play so maybe what you see in pubs is a little bit different and the meta could be slightly different to what we see in ranked so make sure to let me know in the comments below if you think I've missed a trick and there's a weapon that I've put too low or if you think I've put a weapon far too high which deserves to be taken down a notch or two. I've also put a poll in the description so you can vote for what you think is the best gun in Apex Legends so make sure to check that one out if you want to vote and see what other people think. That one will be in the bottom of the description for you guys. But until next time guys I hope you have enjoyed the video make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more regular Apex Legends content from myself. Until next time guys, it's been your boy Ashton and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy and goodbye.